Welcome back, college personal finance students. It's Mr. Clem, and we are going to finish up the work we started today in class with our major purchase. Uh, you guys helped me out, and we picked out a new 2025 King Ranch truck, uh, I assume at Ford, Holt Motors. Sticker price was going to be $74,705. It's a pretty big truck, pretty big thing. I negotiated out 1000 bucks. Discount, traded in my old vehicle, had a down payment. I needed to finance $56,000, but before I got that, I needed to get charged sales tax, title and registration. So I'm really going to the bank and borrowing almost 61,000 bucks. We looked up the interest rates and they were six or 8%, six for new cars, eight for used cars. And then in class, we went and said, well, new cars have three to eight year repayment plans. What are those payment plans going to be? You notice as the years stretch out, your monthly payment gets smaller because you're stretching out another year, but also notice you're also paying more. If you're paying for longer. You're reducing your principal balance by less each month to month. So it's going to take you longer to pay the vehicle off. So in class, we decided, well, let's take the eight-year option. Whether I can or can't, we said I can afford 800 bucks a month to buy this new truck. We then started an amortization schedule. And this is a listing of every single payment we have. And by the time we get to the bottom, it's going to prove that we have paid off the vehicle. We get all the way down here to the 96 payment. And in theory, that number there is supposed to be zero. Now, we didn't do it yet, but that's where we're going to go. If this number is something other than zero, we've got a challenge. As we look at our numbers here, we can write them with typing in numbers. We can write in formulas. Now, the formulas are a little bit more work early, but they help more long term. Right? You're setting up a system or a template that you can copy and paste or duplicate and be more efficient as long as you know what it's doing. Right? If you don't really know what you're doing, then maybe typing the numbers out is your better option. So we said, rather than typing this number in, hit an equal sign and say, well, how much are we borrowing? Well, it's this number right here. We're borrowing 60,815 and 83 cents. We then said, let's go ahead and calculate the interest. We don't know if we're going to pay the monthly payment, right? The bank doesn't know, so it's going to charge us interest first. It'll wait for us to make the payment, and when we make the payment, it'll go ahead and, and deduct. So we say, all right, let's start with our 6% interest, divide it by 12, and then we're going to multiply it by how much money we still owe the bank. Well, right now it's 68, 15, and 83 cents. We owe them $304.08. They charge it to us. We go ahead and make the truck payment. Payment is $799.21. Now, I can type in 799.21, or I can say, you know what? I did the math here. Go pull that cell. The challenge is I want it to always come back and always pull this cell value. I don't want it to move down. Some, sometimes we do want it to move down. Sometimes we don't. This time we don't. We want it to always come back here. Way, way, way back when I taught you a, a skill called absolute cell reference, would I put a dollar sign? after the equals and before the letter and between the letter and the number. This locks in the cell, both row and column, and it's always going to come back here. So if I fill handle this down, it's always going to come back to that same 799.21 number. I can do it for all 96 cells. Why? Because I've got the dollar sign, the absolute cell reference. I start owing the bank $60,815. They charge me $300 in interest. I make about an $800 payment. When I add these numbers up, a positive, a positive, and a negative number, that's why I'm adding, 
it says I owe about $500 less. Difference between these two numbers here. So I owe them $60,320 at the end of month one. Still owe money on the car. It's still the bank's car. I drive it, but they own it. Logic says if I finish this month owing $63,20, that's what I begin month two with. My interest only calc is roughly the same. It's still the 6% divided by 12 multiplied by this number. Now I can write it individually each time or I can say, well, let's fill handle it down. Let's try that. Before I let go, should this number get bigger or smaller? Well, we hope smaller because this number got smaller. My number got bigger. What did I do? I go back and look at my first one. It's pulling 6%. Divide by 12. Multiply by B14. What about this one? This one went down a row. I didn't want it to go down a row. I wanted it to always come back to this 6% number. So I can do one of two things. I can either, rather than referencing a cell, just say 6%. But then I got to remember to change it every single time I copy and paste or if I do a different car. Or again, I can use absolute cell reference. I can say, pull that value there and lock it in, right? Dollar sign before, dollar sign in between. Always reference this 6% number, then go ahead and divide by 12, then multiply it by the month. When I refill handle it down, you'll notice that that number got small. It should, because that number got small. Fill handle my ending balance down. And again, did we get about $500 less balance? We did. We paid 800 bucks. This time they only charge us 301 in interest. This number plus 301 minus that number says we dropped another 500 bucks in principle. Here's our key. And I'm going to take a little bit of color off just to make it easier to see. Do I have to do this one by one by one by one all the way through? You don't have to. You can go ahead and take just your second payment, just this row worth of information and fill handle it down. My 6320, my 301, my 799, my 59823. I take these numbers and I start dragging them down. This balance gets smaller, this balance gets smaller, this balance stays the same, this balance gets small. How do I know I'm right? Well, when I keep dragging it all the way down to the bottom, and when I let go on my 96th payment, I owed the bank $795. They charged me one month's worth of interest on a really small balance. It comes up to the exact $799.21, and I paid off my whole bill. The car is now mine. We calculated the total payment up here. We can do it in this column as well. Rather than taking this number times 96, I'm just going to add up all of these numbers here. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and I'm going to write just an adding formula to say add up everything here in this column. Add up all of these total payments, all 96 of them. And again, I label. And while I'm at it, I might as well add up the interest. So I started out and I borrowed $60,815 at 6% annual interest. And over eight years or 96 equal payments, I paid a total of $76,723.86. I ended up paying just short of $16,000 in interest to buy this vehicle. 
you may go, man, that's a lot of interest. What, what if I, what if I could afford a different, uh, different uh, payment plan? What if I could afford maybe this six-year loan rather than the eight-year loan? How much would I save? Well, short, simple math says about four grand. But let's do the math all together. Why work harder than you have to? Let's take our eight-year repayment plan, copy it, and we always like to do the longest one first. I like to leave one open column just to make sure these things are a little bit easy to read, and I'm going to paste it. Now, here's where the key starts. i got to relabel. If I don't relabel, things get messy in a hurry. Rather than an eight-year Let's go with a six year or rather than a 96 month repayment plan. Let's go with a 72 month repayment. Plan. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and say, well, if 72 months is my repayment plan, all of this stuff I don't need. So let's just go ahead and delete that. Everything from payment number 73 on down. Now I've got two little changes to make and then the rest of this is going to work for me. When I copied and pasted, it didn't bring over my beginning balance. So I'm going to go rewrite that formula and say, well, let's go over here and find it again. And the second thing, because I'm not going to pay only 800 bucks, I'm going to pay a little over a thousand. I need to go change my payment from E8 to E6. Again, if I want the same place every single time, I got to put the absolute cell reference on. And change the color to green to make sure that my color schemes are matching. Make this hundred or thousand dollar seven payment. I'm saying it all the way down to the bottom. How do I know I'm right? As soon as I let go, is my payment now zero? I go down to the bottom and I can compare and I can say, okay, yep, I paid more. That reduced the principal balance quicker. So I only had to pay $72,000 rather than seventy-six. dollars Again, that $4,000 number I said. What's the difference between those two? And again, rather than paying fifteen thousand, almost sixteen thousand in interest, I paid just short of twelve. So again, that same forty-one fifty-five fifty-one. So that is our major purchase vehicle using the payment function to calculate the monthly payment, amortization schedule, and then copying and pasting and making a different amortization schedule.